Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing and recapping the first episode of Marvel Studios Secret Invasion. If you're into that, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe as we keep growing out towards 300 subscribers. Now, let's talk about Secret Invasion. Before we get started, I do want to say we're going to be spoiling stuff, so if you have not seen the episode and you care about spoilers, come back and rewatch and watch this after you've seen the episode because we're going to dive into it all. Starting right off the top with the fact that there was a Martin Freeman and Agent Ross scrawl. Yes, that's right, we get a cool action scene It kind of sets the tone for the series all before the opening title sequence even comes on screen with Martin Freeman's character. And we think he might be investigating a scroll, but as it turns out, when Maria Hill shows up and Talos shows up, he, in fact, is a scroll. But they do say that this was just an Agent Ross imposter, that Ross was not a scroll like, the whole time. And while I understand that because you want to bring Martin Freeman back, I do wish that they maybe would have said that he was a scroll the whole time. Like, it, I think it would have been cool if, like, maybe he was helping Wakanda just to, like, you know, get access to their technology and learn their secrets so the scrolls can take over. I think that would have been cool. But I get why you don't because you want Martin Freeman to come back in future projects. But I think that would have been, like, a holy shit moment to open up the episode. And then we get into the title sequence, which looks interesting but is getting very much controversial opinions because apparently Marvel used AI to create it and it's kind of weird I wonder why they used AI I mean I know why to cut costs but like it looks similar to like the Daredevil opening the Moon Knight opening so I don't know why they just couldn't hire like whoever did those to do this but whatever like I get I get I think if this would have been a year ago no one would have really cared but right now during the writer's strike and the SAG upcoming strike and all that i think it's a very touchy subject so i think maybe stay away from ai right now i think it was a kind of interesting choice for marvel to use ai and then we get into the things we see uh nick fury come back down to earth he's looking aged he's looking weathered you know he's up working on saber but he he looks like an old man now this is an old man fury we're dealing with he meets up with maria hill and talos and man oh man does he and Ben Mendelsohn, Sam Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn have amazing chemistry. That was one of my favorite parts about the Captain Marvel film. I didn't like that film very much, but those two were great together and they still are. Their chemistry is off the freaking charts and they kind of talk and discuss about what's going on to set up the overall threat. And then it jumps over to Don Cheadle. We get a quick scene with Don Cheadle's uh, roadie, James Road Williams, and he's talking with the President of the United States who is now played by Dermot Mulroney, who we saw earlier this year in Scream 6. I love him. I, I can't believe he's in the MCU now. I'm sure he's going to pop up maybe in like a Thunderbolt. I'm sure he's going to have like quick scenes here and there. I can't wait to see what they do with his character. I'm, it's kind of cool that they set up all these characters like right off the bat. We get to see the whole cast right at the start. You know, a lot of these Marvel shows, they announce cast members, but we don't see them until like episode five. So the whole time you're wondering like, when's this character going to come in? What are they going to do? This show puts them all out there. They put all the pieces on the board and they're like, Let's play, and I thought that was very cool to do. And then we get more stuff with Amelia Clark's character, who it's revealed that she is the daughter of Ben Mendelsohn's Talos. Uh, you know, we saw her in little girl form in Captain Marvel. I think her name's like Gaia or something like that, something close to that. And uh, it's revealed that that's that character all grown up, which I thought was very cool. She is helping the bad guy uh, run like a scrawl civilization in Russia, and they're, you know, gaining members and you know slowly doing terrorist attacks throwing bombs in places doing crazy shit we get a very sinister scene of them like you know taking a human's likeness and then like wiping their mind and putting it in a scroll like these scrolls are sinister these are not the friendly ones like talos from captain marvel these scrolls mean business and they are here to destroy and take over the earth they mean business and what does that mean for her relationship with talos we get a couple interesting scenes there it looks like maybe she's going to betray the bad guys and, you know, come back to the good side. But we'll have to wait and see. Maybe she'll pull a double switch and she'll just use Talos to, uh, you know, farther their goals. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out. We get a lot of not really him dealing with it per se, but teases that maybe he'll deal with it more later on in the show. That Fury is dealing with the mental aspects of what happened to him in the snap. Similar to how uh, Iron Man dealt with the, uh, you know, mental effects in Iron Man 3 of Thanos, or, um, yeah, Thanos' army showing up with Loki and the Avengers. 
it's very curious. Like, he, they keep saying, like, you've changed. You've slowed down. Like, that snap affected you more than you think. And he's like, nah, 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 I'm, I'm the same Fury I always was. And maybe he is. Maybe he's just playing weak so people underestimate him. But it's cool to see, you know, the mental aspects of the snap affecting him. And we do get a quick scene of him, like, uh, you know, having, like, uh, a flashback to him getting snapped. And I can't wait to explore more of that aspect and really dive into the Fury's mental aspect of the character. And then we get this big end set piece which i saw a couple people online saying it wasn't good i i don't understand that at all because i thought the ending of the show was phenomenal we get you know amelia clark's character tells talos like hey these bombs are going here you need to stop them i'll put an x on the bags so uh you know you know maria hill uh nick fury and talos go to this you know big open area in russia to stop this bombing from happening with the scrolls and they're chasing down all these scrolls and uh you know talos and Maria Hill find, you know, empty bags. The bombs aren't in those. They were just a decoy. Well, Nick Fury is going after this girl he saw earlier in the episode. And slowly, as they go through this area, she keeps transforming into people as he's following her. And then it's revealed that he is the main bad guy of the show, who I can't remember his freaking name right now, which is really bugging me because I thought the performance of the actor was really good. And, uh, you know, he turns around and he's he just, like, kind of, like, lets a little coy smile on his face and then boom, blows the bombs and, like, kills tons of people, everyone's going nuts, like, Nick Fury and them have failed their mission, people are going nuts, and then Fury finds Maria Hill, but it's not Fury, it's the villain, and he shoots Maria Hill, and then the real Fury and Talo show up as she, it lo definitely looks like she died, you know, maybe in episode two they pick her up and resuscitate her or something, but I hope not, because it was a what-the-hell moment to end the first moment of the show. Maria Hill, Kobe Schmolder's character that we've known since the Avengers in 2012, dies at the end of the first episode. I was like, what? What? I thought maybe she would be, like, you know, her character would be a scroll and maybe try to attack Fury or something, but it was the switcheroo. Blew my mind. I thought it was great. I thought this whole episode was great. It reminded me of, you know, vibes from, like, the Winter Soldier movie, which is still my favorite MCU movie. This was, like, a spy espionage thriller. It felt like, like, Andor for the Marvel Universe. I saw some people saying it was boring, which I do not understand. I was, like, glued to my TV for the entire episode. But then again, a lot of people said Andor was boring, which I totally disagree with. Slow, not, you know, big blockbuster. Sure, but not boring. It's you know, methodical and planned out and interesting. And that's what I think this show is so far as well. Who knows, maybe episode two just stinks up the joint. But episode one was amazing, in my opinion. And this is the Marvel show I've been waiting for. It did not disappoint. It's the best Marvel show in quite some time. That's the first episode of Marvel's Secret Invasion. What did you guys think? Are you in? Are you excited for episode two? Did you like did your melon blow off your shoulders when Maria Hill gets shot at the end? Mine sure did. Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to be recapping these episodes every single Wednesday here on the channel. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys right here next time.